Hey everyone, welcome back to the Film Fund Podcast. I'm your host, founder and executive producer at the Film Fund, Thomas Verity. I'm also an award-winning filmmaker, producer, and film festival judge. I started the Film Fund to give filmmakers an easier, alternative way to get their films funded. Instead of working on a screenplay, crowdfunding campaign, or grant application, you write one sentence pitching your film for a chance to receive up to $10,000 and other prizes to make it. Our spring 2021 narrative and documentary funding contests are about to begin. They open next Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, so don't sub- forget to submit your pitch. Check us out at thefilmfund.co to enter your one-sentence pitch for a chance to win up to 10000 to make your film. And we want to remind listeners the contests happen regularly, so if you are listening at a later date, check the website at thefilmfund.co for the most up-to-date information. Today we have Don Finelli back on the show, writer, actor, producer of the Film Fund winner, Sunday Dinner. Don, thanks for coming on the show again. Yeah, uh, could you give us a brief reminder of who you are, what you do? I don't know anymore. I don't know who <laughs> I am anymore after this year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got into this whole thing, <laughs> not by accident, but yeah, I was uh, I did engineering in college and then kind of fell into the acting thing and improv through the Upright Citizens Brigade. So I, I, I was kind of making the go as an actor, then went into acting school and, you know, was just doing a lot of uh, small things in New York for a while, then auditioning for stuff and hitting up some TV shows, little movies here and there. And then uh, started writing more uh, and uh, got into this like short films team at the UCB and we started pumping out little short films. I really loved the process. And um, that's that's where I wrote Sunday Dinner, but it took about seven years mm-hmm. uh, to wow. make. So was yeah. that in New York or L.A., did you say? That was that was in New York, yeah. That was, that New, was York. New York, okay. Yeah. Very, yeah. So how did you make the transition from engineering to what you do now? Because, I mean, <laughs> I actually <laughs> – I started – I, I changed, I guess, earlier than you did, but I started out as an engineering major and basically hated calculus and yep. was like, screw this, I'm going to... I think we went to the same instead. college too, Thomas. I we did, we... yeah. Yeah, shout out Lehigh. Shout out to Lehigh, yeah. Uh, a, a, one of the best engineering schools in the country and uh, not to, I'm not doing that to my own horn. I did not do well there. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, but it, I it... almost did not do well there and then I... <laughs> You I made dropped those the smart two moves. courses <laughs> right before it hit my GPA. I was like, ah, yeah. let's do the it. The math stuff was okay. <laughs> a lot of the other stuff, not so much. I, you know, it, it, the funny thing looking mm. back, right? Like when you're going through it, you feel like there's like something wrong with you. And there is. But uh, sometimes it's, there's, you know, you don't have the passion for the thing. So the classes I did well in were more of the design classes, more of like the artistic classes. I was always the one to give like presentations So I was Mm -hmm. always the one to kind of defer to other people to like do some of the heavy duty calculations and research. And then I was able to kind of look at it and put it all together and be like, oh, I can make sense of this data and present Mm -hmm. it. So I think I was always I always had like a a teaching quality in me. I like to teach. I'd like to present. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was acting when I was younger, like in all the school plays and stuff like that. And then I was in a couple Mm -hmm. bands. Uh, I was in a band in high school. I was in a band in college. Oh, so I was like performing. It's just when I, you know, got to uh, college that that kind of, you know, it was it was the that's fun to do on the side kind of mm-hmm. thing. I was playing baseball there too at Lehigh. And oh, nice. What um, so for a couple of years? For, for a couple of years. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> do you play an instrument? Uh, I play guitar and piano. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Awesome. Um, so you know, it was it was always in the it was always around and, and, you know, so I did some engineering stuff after college and, and, and really just was like, there's like a two, three year period where I was really just bouncing around. I was a, you know, sold life insurance and was a headhunter and, and then mm-hmm. became like this like permanent substitute teacher in a, in a school <laughs> in North Bergen, New Jersey. And, and so I would like, yes. Yeah, so, so I basically didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. My dad's friend was a actor uh, and he was teaching at a, a college. And so I kind of met up with him and he's like, Hey, let's, you know, take a dollar bus ride into the city and, mm-hmm. uh, go, I, I'm taking brush up course. You know, he was like 50 something at the time. Yeah, I'm taking brush up courses at the U- UCB theater. So take a look at it. Like you can take a class, get on stage in eight weeks and see if you like it. See if you like acting, like see if you like doing it. Like mm-hmm. there's no script. Just see if you like being on stage with other people in front of an audience. And that was such good advice, you know, just like a, to dip your toe in. So you don't have to, I mean, classes then were not to- that as expensive. They were recently. So mm-hmm. it's just like a good way to spend a couple hundred bucks just to see if you like 
what you think is you know sometimes what's in our head is not the reality of oftentimes right. is not the reality of uh, of how it's going to go or what's what's happening mm-hmm. so that's kind of how i made the transition there was a rocky two or three year period where i really was kind of trying to figure out what to do with my life and mm-hmm. and while i was taking classes i was still trying to kind of figure things out that at least i found something i was just like well this feels right you know mm-hmm. you yeah stop i just went through something yourself. similarly we um one of the very first podcast episodes i mentioned we were doing something called ff brand and it was going to be an ad agency through the film fund we basically use this community to create branded content yeah um qu- quick segue here this is not about you at all but just the finding out what you want to do in your life but basically no, decided i love to put it. that on a hi- hiatus because i was doing cold calls and trying to get sales and we made we made one video it came out really really well um but i just hated the sales process i was on linkedin sending people messages yeah. um yeah and like I, I can do sales i had a job offer for a sales job out of college i decided not to take it um and this i just i hated it so i was like all right i'm miserable i need to take a step back i started storyboarding a short that i'm shooting now this summer awesome. and i was just so much happier i just i felt like <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what I should be doing. Where, uh, so where I, are you? I resonate f- with you there. Where are you from? Are you from like the tri-state area? I'm from outside of Philly. Okay. Right so now I live in Philly. I just feel like kind of like where Villanova is at. I feel like people in that that area, right? Like Philly to Boston. There's something about like you know family or friends that are in the like bit like sales or finance, and mm-hmm. you it's I don't know if you felt like this, but I felt like. I should be good at this because like everyone around me is like wearing a suit and tie and is on the phone. And I grew up watching boiler room and wall street. And I was like, this looks, and I can do it. I can act, Mm -hmm. you know, like when I'm on the phone with someone, I can really bullshit a little bit and, and really kind of believe what I'm selling them. But at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. I felt like a fraud. I was like, I feel much worse trying to convince people to do something Mm-hmm. It's just not me. I'd rather like the acting part feels fine, but the result of it felt really like gross to me. So yeah, I, I don't know if you felt something. So I, I don't know if it's like, a, I doubt it's just a tri-state area thing. I think it's just because mm-hmm. I know so many people f- yeah. that, you know, got into finance and all, a lot of my yeah. parents, friends were in finance and New York city. And it was the big, like mm-hmm. on the phone people that could talk to anybody yeah. And I was like, oh, I wish I could do that. But like yeah. in my bones, I hated cold calling. I, yeah. I don't know anybody yeah. that really loves it. I think you kind of have to be a psychopath. And I know I worked yeah. with some I mean, people I that were felt... kind of psychopathic. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I, I've read there's a certain I forget what the actual number is, but a large like a significant percentage of people who work in financial services industry are actually psychopaths. Yeah. It's just like, like the, that's, empath- that's the empathy thing they can shut down. Right. Like they can yeah. shut down. Mm-hmm. They. They see it as a game. And listen, if that's what you want to do and you like that hustle and bustle and you like that lifestyle, again, for me, I think it was more in my head that sounds awesome and yeah. I should be able to do this because everyone I know does this. And That was me with engineering. All the quote unquote smart kids in high school were in these AP science courses. So I was like, all right, I'll do that. I'll mm-hmm. go to Lehigh, get an engineering degree because that's what I, I saw the smart kids doing. It was that or they were going to finance. <laughs> and I got there and I just hated it. Um, yeah. I was like, it's not for me. So yeah. back to Sunday dinner. Yeah. Um, you wrote that at UCB. Yeah. So give us a brief. I had Kevin do this too. Give us a brief overview of what Sunday dinner is about in your words. Sure. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's about uh, a, a, a bunch of siblings, Italian American siblings uh, coming together after the death of their parents to have their traditional Sunday dinner uh, together again for the first time. Um, and one of them has this kind of secret that, uh, is going to upend this kind of beloved tradition, especially after, Mm -hmm. uh, the death of, uh, of their parents. And, and it's one of the, one of the brothers is, uh, comes out as a vegan. So can't have the meat, can't have the cheeses, these things that are very near and dear to Italian Americans hearts. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was a, it was a, yeah, it, that, that's kind of the overview of it. And, 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 and it's, I, I maybe said this on the last time, but I, I kind of come from a traditional versus progression hang up in my writing. I'm always like, I, I really love the traditions of my culture. I love traditions of other cultures. I think they're strong and sacred, uh, things that 
make us feel connected, make us feel part of something bigger. I also think sometimes we're a little too stuck in the past. I also love progression. I also love Mm -hmm. progressiveness. I like pushing boundaries and not just doing something because we've done it before. I like to question why. So Mm -hmm. I have this big internal conflict, especially, you know, second generation. Um, I'm sure I've talked to a lot of first generation folks about this too, about like how, how the assimilation part, the progression part versus the, you know, the sacred nature of what connects you to your culture because there's something mm-hmm. so primal and special about that. Yeah. So that's what I yeah, put we're... into. That was my main kind of theme writing mm-hmm. this. Uh, when it's do definitely we universal. Like you were saying, different cultures. I mean, talked if you go back and listen to the episode we had with Kevin, we kind of talk about how that dinner could happen at any family yeah. table regardless of what – you know, nationality or descent. That's the reaction we got. I don't know if he told you this on Amleto. There was all these comments. We had such Mm -hmm. awesome comments of just being like, oh, that's my family, but Haitian. That's my, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's my Cuban family. That's like, it's, Mm -hmm. it's, it was, it was, it was just so funny to be like, oh yeah, this is kind of a universal thing. And Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my friends growing up, you know, they're they're different cultures, Korean and stuff like that. So it's like, Oh, mm-hmm. everyone has a Sunday dinner. They they all have some sort of coming together, um, fam- like a family coming together day or day of the month or something with mm-hmm. like external family. Uh, if you're lucky enough, you know, some people aren't lucky enough to have that or have that culture in their life or maybe not lucky, but, you know, they just they don't have that. But I think anybody that comes from a specific culture you know, America is mm-hmm. this huge melting pot. So I think there's a lot of different cultures here. I think there's something. And even if you're, you know, d- f- from the Mayflower, there's something, you know, there's some sort of like tradition that mm-hmm. your family probably had. Absolutely. Um, that it's like, we don't want to lose this. But also, is this, can we change it? Or can we update mm-hmm. it? Is that and that's like, where the progressiveness comes in yeah. that you were talking about. Yeah, that's where that's that interesting. comes in. So talking about the, the YouTube comments, um, watching them and watching people relate to your film, what was that like having the release um, online with COVID? I know you would have preferred in-person yeah. festivals. I think we all would have. Yeah. But um, were there any interesting things that you saw happen online that you liked that maybe you wouldn't have gotten? I think, you know, it's just you you lose the I'm much better in person with like one on one with people and talking Mm -hmm. about stuff. That's just sometimes this divide is a little bit difficult for me uh, to interact. It's 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 kind of like a a wall, like like we're literally talking through something else. And I I, I feel that viscerally. Um, So, yes, I, I was. Yeah. I mean, listen, I was I was bummed that I. I've never sat with this. It, the film got into a ton of festivals, which I was so happy about. Mm-hmm. I, we never all sat with like people around watching it. Yeah. And listening yeah, to that I did collective one... laughter mm-hmm. or, you know. Yeah. If, if you want to live vicariously through me <laughs> watching your film, I went to Garden State Film Festival a few oh, weeks cool. back and watched it. And there, were, there were people there. Um, and I got a great reaction. Oh, that's so awesome. If, I was, if that I was, makes you feel better. I was literally in New Jersey at that oh, really? time, but I had something else to do at that. Like when it was playing, yeah. I was like, oh, I was yeah, like was literally going to be like down late... in Asbury Park like the next day. It was, it was, it was just, oh, no. <laughs> it just like the timing didn't work out. I was like, if this was mm. on a sun, you know, uh, but th- that's awesome to hear. That's, that's very, very cool to hear. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the online stuff though, you know, doing it through doing that that release on that platform amaletto is such a bigger platform i was mm-hmm. su- i was very surprised like <laughs> about how many comments yeah that people had and they were like too. mostly positive i was i was you know mm-hmm. you see i've put out so much dumb shit online oh yeah and <laughs> you know the comments are all over the place i don't care i mean i know mm-hmm. everyone says like oh you really care i'm just i don't like uh I, it, everyone has their own opinion and i i i've I tried to please everybody at one point in my life. That just doesn't work. So no, uh, I was, I was, I was pleasantly surprised at those comments though. It was, it was really cool how it touched some people or I think what we just touched on before seeing how there was other people that were like, Oh, this is my family, but yeah. this culture, kind of that was together. the coolest mm. part. I think. Yeah. 
What's also cool is I just pulled up the link. It is almost at 100,000 views. Oh on my YouTube gosh. On Leto page. Right now it's at 99,917. Wow. That's crazy. So that's awesome. That's yeah, and awesome. It's also, on, yeah. <laughs> it's also on our YouTube page on the Film Funds website if you want to check you. that out. We don't have 100,000 views, but <laughs> we have some that are getting getting a few hundred, getting up there, maybe 1,000. That's, um, uh, that's so cool, though. And, and listen, like more people now have seen this than they would have in the festivals, right? Yeah, so it's, exactly. It's that's that's also pretty cool. So I miss I miss that kind of camaraderie feeling and mm-hmm. talking to other filmmakers that way. And some of the film festivals were very good at connecting and interviewing and 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 hey, here's a block of people. So you got to kind of talk to people and see other people's films. I watched a ton mm-hmm. of other people's films, some really really awesome films out there. So it's like there's so many other people that worked really hard on art, wanted to put it mm-hmm. out there for you know to feel that collective feeling of being like here's my art how does it let's all that scary feeling to kind of put something out there and be like how do people yep. react i also yeah. because of improvising for so long i'm so used to just kind of going out there here it is you know um right. was there a lot of improv on this production there was a little bit i we took i think it's mostly we tried to keep it as close to the script as possible, but I I was like, we'd be foolish. I have some of the best improvisers mm-hmm. <laughs> sitting around me. Uh, they were some of the best UCB writers. People? Yeah, they're all UCB people. They're, okay. I would say, you know, Andrew Law, you know, is, is written on The Good Place. And I mean, he's he is a legit awesome writer and he's a phenomenal mm-hmm. actor. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, getting him, uh, Mike Antonucci, I've known for so long. The, this mm. is his family you know too so it's like and then some so i knew like nooch would kill it and but he's a writer you know like mary holland mm-hmm. uh, unbelievable talent uh you know long time uh ucb la performer that i got i got to know mm. over the years uh being out here and then gabrus it's like i mean it was a murderer's row of improvisers like these were yeah. some of the better improvisers out there so i'd be stupid not so yeah of course we kept some unbelievable mm-hmm. one-liners uh from everybody uh and mm-hmm. then would just go like oh and i was like listen these some things are very important to hit and then some things like put them in your words and then something is mm-hmm. like let's just can we just do a take or two where we're just rattling off yeah what does this food smell like to you what does it look like to you like and then we'll just mm-hmm. you know do six takes of that and, and quick you know 30 seconds and then just pick the funniest ones like let's just keep mm-hmm. going and we all yeah. we always have like a I, I think sometimes improvisers have a, a one-up nature to each other. So there was mm-hmm. a fun, like, how crazy can we? Meaning what, they want to, like, compete with one another almost? Yeah, like, let's see, like, how, I don't, I never got the vibe of the competing thing. It's just like, oh, that's funny. Let me try to top that. Let's, let's build on it, yeah. Yeah, let's build off of that. That's really funny. Mm-hmm. It's not like, oh, fuck you, I'm going to. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's building. It's that yes end attitude of just, like, building mm-hmm. off the last thing the person said and not negating it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I'd be foolish not to <laughs> have, have had some improv you know improvising moments i don't think i Mm -hmm. improvised at all like my lines i think Mm -hmm. my lines were in my bones though i mean i've been reading the goddamn thing for seven years so just like i knew i how i performed it was probably improvised but i think that's Mm -hmm. that's how i like to act so did you not want to and i don't know if you do anyway outside of this project but did you always envision someone else directing it yeah Always, okay. always envision someone else directing it. Just cause I had no confidence and and in myself to direct this thing, and just never directed anything before. So I was like, my my goal was to really pay attention and try to be a part of the process. So that's what I talked to Kevin mm. about. Like, how do you do I this see. and that, and you know, asking questions and and I would think maybe my the next thing I would like to do, I'd like to take a bigger role in it, but also mm. would wouldn't want to do it completely by myself. And and you learn mm. that there's different directors, right? There's some directors that are coming out of a the cinematography world that are really focused on how things are looking and then mm-hmm. there's directors that are coming out of the acting world that are really focused yep. on like the hey what are we saying here what is the purpose of this like why mm-hmm. are we doing this this and that and and then there's like the the brilliant in betweeners that know what that know what it's going to look like and then can also prime the set so it feels new every time Mm -hmm. in a way you know what i mean because you you know you can read yeah just just 
you could read i think when things have been have been uh <laughs> filmed for belabored. a while yeah, yeah. belabored yeah yeah 100 yeah. percent. so how did i know we talked a little bit about this um you said you wrote it at ucb you're talking about your family growing up and different yeah. cultures but was there a moment where you were like okay this is the concept for sunday dinner how did you come up with the actual concept the, you talked a little bit about it in the last episode in terms yeah. of like going out to LA and coming back. Yeah. I don't I don't know if there was like it was so long ago, so it was it's mm-hmm. really hard to like come up with that moment. I just remember every time I would there was just a phase of my life where I was getting like kind of super healthy. Uh, I cook mm-hmm. a lot. You know, I grew up cook my parents both cook. My you know, my whole family cooks. If food is so important to us. Mm-hmm. But I also noticed that like there was a there was illness in family and extended family and mm-hmm. there was yeah d- just hereditary diseases there was things that are were genetic that you know possibly could be preventable and so anyway i took a deep dive into like getting super healthy and and really mm-hmm. focusing on what we were eating uh where it's coming from so i kind of went a little psychopathic i never became vegan <laughs> Uh, I didn't go there. I just thought like, well, what's mm-hmm. the, I'm kind of insane right now. What's the most insane version of me that yeah. I can kind of bring to the table that would juxtapose like the most extreme version of like my aunts and uncles, you know, that mm-hmm. are like Jersey. We eat pasta and gravy. They call it not yep. sauce, right? They eat the yep. gravy. I grew up calling it gravy as well. Gravy. <laughs> eat the gravy on Sundays, you know, and it's meatballs, it's sausage, it's, it's brajol, it's, it's pork mm-hmm. neck. It's, all the good meats just kind of soaking in there. So I, I remember this one. I, I Yeah, I don't remember like exactly what, but I remember just like even just trying my trying to like convince my parents to buy like, if there's organic broccoli, Rob. And I was like, my parents like no one, eat, no one but us, I feel, eats broccoli. Yeah. No one even knows what that is. You know, yeah, it's not even a broccoli actually. Yeah, it, it, just get that schkadol. Yeah, yeah, eating schkadol and beans, that escrow and beans. <laughs> So I, I just remember that I remember their exhausted look mm-hmm. and their, you know, every time I would come home, I'd be, they'd almost, I could feel they were like, Oh Christ, you know, like, here we go again. Like mm-hmm. what, what's, what's wrong with what we're cooking now, Don, you know what I mean? Right. To the point where I was like, all right, I got to back off a little bit, but there was like a two year period where I was a little high on my horse, a little obsessive. Mm-hmm. I think I was just like, my mom has MS. Like there was cancer in my family. I think I was just like, well, I'm kind of like the person that's like very proactive with it. It's been like, but if we can prevent it or at least mm-hmm. damper it, like why right. wouldn't we be so gung ho to do this? And they were just like, yeah, you know, so I, I wanted to bring that passion to my character in the mm-hmm. film of like, if, but you know, and the, and the thing was just like, you have to enjoy life though. You know what I mean? There was the, the right, counter yeah. was that I was like, yeah, but it's not going to be fun if you're sick, you know? Mm-hmm. So maybe yeah. I was just, uh, I'm a little um, hypochondriatic or I don't know if that's a word, but uh, uh, just just maybe there was a fear, I guess, because I saw mm-hmm. the toll it took on family and friends that were went, yeah. had cancer and had diseases that I was like, they're not here anymore. It's so sad, you know, like, mm-hmm. why not just change your diet a little bit and gain an extra day? I would love to gain an extra day with some of the people that I lost, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the raw place where it's coming from. That yeah. So it comes from a pretty serious place. It definitely comes from a serious place. The vessel mm-hmm. of me is probably annoying with it. Yeah. <laughs> this, this probably, and that's where the, com- the comedy comes in. I think that's it. where the comedy would come in uh, is because mm-hmm. I don't deliver the message well. I yeah. am. <laughs> yeah. I, I think all Turkish. the best comedies – usually uh come from you know serious issues like anyone starting out with an idea that's like a goofy idea that's generally not what is funny like i feel like the best comedies you know it depends it really depends i i I always i mean the places where i I would the things i find most funny are coming from a truthful place they're grounded Mm. in reality but also it's like i don't know i'll watch tim and eric all day you know what i mean which is Mm. but even then you can kind of dissect that i mean tim and tim is that they're comedic geniuses i think and 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 their editor is amazing so you know 
I think that's just kind of wackadoodle. But I think you could always kind of dissect anything and just be like, well, what's the actual? What's this actually saying? Or yeah, what's it actually about? Yeah, what's this that, actually uh, about here? That happened to me on a film I'm in pre-pro for right now. Hopefully, we're shooting in late June. But mm -hmm. just give you a very brief overview, just to explain it. It's called the Toms in a world run by Toms. A man named Tim tries to infiltrate their secret society <laughs> because he feels that his name's close enough. So it's this goofy <laughs> idea, right? This stupid <laughs> idea. It's like this dystopian thing. Yeah. Um, you know, on the surface, like there's no substance to this. And then, um, you know, talking to she hasn't signed on fully yet, but the production designer who, mm -hmm. who I've been talking with, and she asked me on the phone, I was like, so what? What? Are, like, what's the message you're trying to get across with this film? And I was like, oh my god, it's about the lengths people will go to fit in yep and you know peer pressure and insecurity and wanting that's to be what i was thinking right when you said it. And, and belonging <laughs> and it's like I, I i just met all these people named tom in my life in like a one two month period and it was overwhelming and i felt like in the twilight zone but <laughs> it was really coming from that bigger like like do i belong question yeah. um yeah. and i just wanted to bring that up one to plug my own shit two uh <laughs> to show that e even when you do have a goofy idea there is kind of a greater truth to it like you were oh, saying totally. I think that's even if important. you don't see it right away too you know, like start with mm -hmm. the goofy idea. Like sometimes I think I can see when people start with a message and then build off of the message and that can be brilliant yeah. too. And, mm -hmm. but I think something at the seed of the idea, I like to start with the, I'd rather start with the goofy and then go mm -hmm. like, how do I rein in this uh, chaos? Yeah. And you rein in the chaos. You think about the theme, like when you're trying to think about like, what are you trying to say here? What is this about? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you, I, sometimes, and there, listen, we've seen many movies that there's kind of mixed messages or like, I don't know what this is necessarily about. And I, mm. some work, some don't. Uh, I think some of the better movies have a, like the simplest message, even if it's yeah. something we've heard or seen multiple times. It's just like, mm. hey, good for you. Like, hey, listen, I've seen a fucking, uh, are we let to curse? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're cursing. There's a little, I don't even know if Tom, the other producer, see, there's another Tom, our digital content producer. I know, I see Tom. it on the <laughs> <laughs> So there's a little box, and it, when he uploads it, he can check this box uh to make it explicit so you okay can so sorry sorry other tom <laughs> um yeah. uh but yeah it, it, it i don't even know what i was saying but um uh yeah i lost my train of thought it's funny. honestly it, i i did too it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter okay yeah um well my next question is about the production of sunday dinner what were some of the most challenging aspects of the production? i do remember what i was going to say and i'll answer okay that go question. for it go i was going to say i've seen a bunch of sculptures of men naked doing something that's what i was going to say but it means nothing now it it, it, it was it, i should have said it and remembered it back then <laughs> Wait, sculptures of men do it as I'm, that relates to a goofy idea yeah i think i was relating it to like i've seen the same thing over and over again it's just doing uh -huh. it in a different way you know if mm -hmm. you do something that we understand but you do it in a different way that can mm -hmm. hit us pretty hard sometimes does that make sense mm -hmm. like i've seen sculptures the same fucking sculpture but like for some reason oh, the I, david I see, I see what you mean yeah, yeah, the yeah david there's something about it you know like yep. what what, mm. what what michelangelo did with the david there's something about it when you yeah. see it in the and the size of it it's like it's the same i think you should have prefaced that with like michelangelo or like yes yeah, artistic right. sculpture because yeah. you this just is said, good editing yes staring staring at a bunch of naked men yeah. sculptures i was like where is he going with this do this we, is my life <laughs> this is my life man <laughs> This is my life. This yeah. is like, but hey, no, let me get, let me get an idea. Now. And everyone's like, excuse yeah. me? <laughs> okay, let me backtrack and explain my yeah. idea. I think good art is something that's familiar, but we're just seeing it in a, a just kind of different way. It hits mm. you in a different way. Um, mm. So that's all I was saying. Your question. Makes sense. Your question. My question was challenging aspects of filming Sunday dinner. I know the camera went down. You got another one. Yeah. Any, anything else that was really challenging or interesting? I, honestly no i don't think there was anything where i was like i think i was so okay yes th this was challenging for me personally the mm. personal thing that was challenging for me was splitting my brain up trying to act in it and trying to kind of make sure we were covering everything and and, and really relinquishing you know trusting kevin that much to mm. like kevin and i had never worked together I, I did trust him through the process of talking to him. I knew he was going to, mm -hmm. you know, you know, dot his I's and cross his T's and mm -hmm. do everything. Did his due diligence, was super prepared. But there's that. It's your baby. It's seven years. You're yeah. actually doing it. It was really hard for me to um, to 
split my brain up like that and just yeah. have like i think i trusted them 95 percent, but i i could mm-hmm. see in my acting there's that five percent there's probably more of my brain being split in two different ways it has nothing even to do with kevin it was just like is that too dark over there? Um, can yeah. we see this? You know, like so you are. You said you didn't direct it, but in a way, you're you're thinking like a director. Yes. While trying to act. Yes. That's yeah. tough. It's hard not to. It's it, if, if it's your baby, it's hard not to like just be like, mm. well, I don't direct. You know, this is your thing. So like, direct it however yeah. you want to, man. And Kevin was great <laughs> to check in with me with stuff. Mm. And uh, there was just some. There was some. He made a. Br- he made some brilliant. A, a really brilliant cut to the end. Uh, that we kind of filmed it as scripted one way. And he's like, I think we can cut like two pages out of this thing. And I was like, Hmm. really? And he's like, yeah, from here to here, you say all these things. I don't need, I don't think we need to say anything. And there's a moment Hmm. all the way at the end where we kind of just sit in silence. And I thought it was a real brilliant note because it felt so truthful. Like after something happens together, there is that kind of collective exhale moment before uh mary says or bobby and it says um uh you know who wants tiramisu there was like other lines Mm -hmm. there that were other like last callback jokes Mm -hmm. that like my sketch brain was like "Ooh, this would be funny and that did add to something there was just but he was just like i don't think we need it man Mm -hmm. so that you know he made this that really brilliant note i would never have seen that being in it right like you needed someone Mm -hmm. outside of that it was just hard for for me being in it starting to see uh do we need this do we need that there was supposed to be a a Mm -hmm. total intro of like a lot of close-ups of like the food Mm -hmm. of the corn like just like the horn and so we got some of that stuff in but i wanted more ambiance and more kind of close-ups of grandparents and Mm -hmm. that we just didn't have time for that we were kind of rushing to film that we just kind of cut out but it for some reason Mm -hmm. it was like important for me to be like wait no this is how the intro should work and then Mm -hmm. that intro was completely different the intro the slow pan back was the the coolest thing i did not have that in my head in my Mm -hmm. head it was just in my head is just we didn't how i wrote it was like we didn't see anybody yet we just saw Mm close-ups of things so the prayers going on and you're just seeing the family built out piece yeah. by piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love but, that shot you guys get when you, you're like tracking out of the shot. So cool. In the beginning because you're like it's it's intimate but this is me going on a directing tangent but like you're you're pulling away. Yes. And like it's almost like your character is pulling away from the tradition with that. Yep. So like Yeah, it was it was cool symbolism. I didn't know it mm-hmm. at the time. Kevin would be like I think we have a good He's like, I, I think he was trying to tell me in a nice way. Like, I don't know if we need these pickup shots or these inserts. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, I think we really do, man. Like I, it was like the end of the day. It was like, it was like the second day. Everyone's starting to go on. I was mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, shit, we don't have time for X, Y, and Z. And you could see, I was like getting bummed out. He's like, let's try to get some, like, we'll just do like mm-hmm. five second pan ups of some stuff. So he was very kind. And then I was like, oh yeah, we didn't need fucking any of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. So it was like. It's hard to see, yeah, it, you get panicked sometimes when you're in it. And then I think mm-hmm. my acting got affected by that, too, because mm-hmm. I could see there was there are times, especially in the takes we didn't use, too, where I was like, I could see it in my brain. I'm like, oh, I'm like hunched most of the movie. I think, that, I think that works, though, because your character is like nervous about coming out as a vegan. So you said it, man. Like, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. I planned it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> whether you did or not it, it definitely works because you're stressed <laughs> you might not be stressed about the right thing but um so with the let's talk about the pitch a little bit um yeah obviously we, we've written you know very detailed blog posts about how why the pitch works how it creates conflict what the stakes of the the film are go check those out on the blog if you just search don finale or sunday dinner on the blog and i've right passed up. people along to that too that's a great blog oh awesome yeah uh, people you. have reached out to me and i was like they're like how, what did you write and i was just like just go mm. go to this like th- this yeah. explains absolutely everything yeah in better ways and we i send could that, probably explain it mm, when people ask like for tips or examples i, I usually send them that and a few other poster in the blog would be like this is what our judges look for mm-hmm. um and i think we've had some winners actually win recently based on reading those blogs and and crafting their sentences so everyone out there listening definitely check out the blog it's a very useful thing yeah. um 
especially the vlog on Sunday dinner. That's a really good one. I wrote it too because I'm an awesome writer. <laughs> tooting, my own horn, <laughs> tooting my own horn again. <laughs> I don't write for the vlog anymore. But yeah, I'm on like the, the 10 just out of like 10 the, two meter thing. The coins just <laughs> popping out every time. Just a yeah. little horn that's tooting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm editing this too, so maybe I'll, I'll put something in there. But, um, <laughs> the pitch, was that something that you workshopped specifically for the film phone or did you have that most of that log line nope. down already? Nope. That was specifically for you guys. I, okay. you know, I think sometimes, you know, there's, there's places to repeat stuff. So if it's just like, what's this movie about? Like you put the same mm. log line, you put the same. Right. But for this one was, it was so, I got to be honest. I was like, why the hell am I doing this? This is this. There's no way I'm going to win. I, I, I had no, mm. <laughs> I had no, I was like, there's no way they're going to put pick this. I, I just had no confidence. I had no, yeah. absolutely no confidence that I would win. I think that helped because I was like, let me put the most clear <laughs> uh, pitch I mm-hmm. could put together without putting any bells and whistles. I think that's what's yep. so great about this pitch, right? Because I think as I agree. uh uh, filmmakers and art you know we could really be up our own asses so much and oh yeah and really put the really put the extra flowers on the painting and really try to make it look pretty and it's like mm-hmm. strip all that away yeah it's the movie and our about? very first winner uh T- tim viola he said the same thing i was asking mm-hmm. feedback um from him like you know what did you like about the film he's like well it really gave me a challenge to like drill down my log line and exactly. find out like what this what this film is actually about without any of the artistic fluff that you're just that talking about. and how to make it attractive too right you have to yes. like really choose your words carefully to go okay yeah what's this about um anybody can throw a log line of any movie that's just like oh yeah this girl gets swept up in a tornado mm-hmm. and meets some real weirdos and 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 you know wants to get back home is trying to get back home and you're like, okay, what you know, <laughs> it's like not the best pitch for Wizard of Oz. No. Um. So yeah, I think you got to choose your words. So you know, that was that was just for that was just for you guys. Uh, awesome. And and I Let's know I need, I really needed a production. I know I needed a production designer yeah. that was really going to you know capture this. Uh, mm. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because I want to read the actual entries for the sure. listeners out there so they can see what you submitted. An Italian-American man confesses to his passionate siblings that he is now vegan and refuses to eat their traditional Sunday meatballs. And I need dollar sign for a <laughs> DP and prod design, production design. Yeah. Um, and I think you did the, the nail on the head there. Like this Italian-American family, you were talking about the horn and the, the even though you didn't actually put them in the film, the, the inserts, the pickup shots, the food, like yeah. all of that is so important. You need to nail that Um a hundred percent. So I think mentioning production design really sells this thing. Like, okay, Italian American, passionate. These people are, you know, right. maybe colorful and mm-hmm. and they have maybe religious things in there. Um, mm-hmm. So it just it just works. Yeah. So that's a, gr- a great pitch, in my Thanks, opinion. Thanks, man. And our Thanks other for opinion it. too. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So what? Um, you may have already answered this, but what drew you to the film fund when you found out about it? I think because it was for me the first time I saw like now being talking to you guys so much I was like oh this is such a cool thing but the I, I'm guessing a lot of the times and a lot of the people have submitted and some of my friends have made it to the finals which is cool and mm. I think it when I saw it for the first time it was so like wow that seems hard <laughs> for me mm. like for me it's like that seems challenging Right. I was like, for for you submit to some other things, some are free, some are a little, some are a little bit more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, this seemed to be like a good deal to and a challenging. It was just challenging for me. Mm-hmm. I think there was something that tickled me, that was like, I suck at tweeting. Okay. Yeah. So like, I was like that. I think that's why I didn't have the confidence in this. Like, it's hard for uh-huh. me to like reduce down my ideas into clear thoughts, and it scared me to be honest with you. And I think that's why I had to do it. I think I was just mm-hmm. terrified. And it was, I was like, you know, fuck it. Let me just try. Let me just try. Mm-hmm. And I was desperate too. I needed the, mo- yeah. I needed money, man. I didn't have mm-hmm. I, to make this <laughs> thing the way I wanted it to look. I know I needed some help. I really needed some help. Mm-hmm. And doing so much research into these things, I was like, wait, people spend how much on short films? Like 
I've spent like a couple hundred dollars on my past short films. Like, and of yeah. course they don't look great, but right. I was like, if, for people to take you seriously, like they're, I think sometimes are gone are the days, you know, of the Duplass brothers early stuff or, yeah. you know, you filming that there's that early, you know, clerks, you know, I see it behind you and, yeah. and there's that raw, the raw footage film that gets into the festivals I think maybe mm-hmm. the new is like, hey, this is all filmed on an iPhone. I think there's like that's the next generation of things. But even then, they mm. look beautiful, right? Yeah. I mean, like, still, I was watching this one ad for it was I for some car commercial. It may have been Bentley. It was like sh- shot on iPhone, and then I saw some B- BTS behind the scenes of that shoot. They had they spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Maybe I'm exaggerating the budget. I don't yeah. know, but like thousands on rigs and yeah, lighting right. and. Right. everything so it's yeah. like even then it's still shot on iphone you still have big crews and thousands yeah. being thrown at this yeah. thing right yeah i just feel like gone are the days of i mean a lot of the indie stuff is is see you later but i think there's such a I, my experience going through the film festival because this was my first kind of rodeo with that as well mm-hmm. there are so many talented so many passionate filmmakers on on the unseen level right on just the film festival circuit you mm. know there's of course you're going to see some head scratchers i'm sure people watch my film and i was like eh, whatever you know mm-hmm. but most of the time like you're like shit man there's some really good filmmakers out here like people that are trying to say something that just look right a lot of great documentary filmmakers which i'm always like so impressed by mm-hmm. um yeah it, it's it's uh uh, to go back to your question, I was scared, intimidated, and there's something that tickled me when I saw it that was like, I don't think I can win this, but I think this would be a really healthy, cool way. And it was sh- short, too. <laughs> it's just like, hey, give us the bare bones. That's yeah. it. It's yeah. not like, who are you? Uh, where? What's your passions in life? You know, some, some, mm. some other... Uh, uh, film funds and stuff like that. Some of the places that are giving grants. I mean, you have to submit a ton oh, of yeah. stuff. Twenty pages. I submitted a grant. And I did it. In college. That was twenty pages. Yeah. And so I think I was also coming off of one of those, where uh-huh. I was like, "Well, this is a breath of fresh air," and it scared the shit yeah. out of me. So mm-hmm. I think that combination was just like, I mean, why not do it? <laughs> yeah why not I mean, there is a chance like why not do mm-hmm. it you don't have to tell them who you are and all your passions you just need to tell them as clear as possible tell you guys like this is what the film's about this is what mm-hmm. i need the money for um that's it baby that's it that's so it. You, you pretty much answered this in the last question but what would you say your favorite thing is about the film fund <sighs> oh man well Besides getting to talk to me and my yeah, besides my favorite thing, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it it truly was the ease of working with you guys. I mean, one getting selected that was unbelievably unexpected. It helped so much. I mean, mm-hmm. it took the film to the next level. I mean, we can't, we can't, uh, we could not have. It could not have looked and. It just wouldn't have been without without this. So it's like I'm mm-hmm. I'm forever uh, humbled and thankful for for that. Uh, Happy to help. Yeah, the favorite the favorite thing was working with you guys and 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 uh, uh, how simple the process was. To be honest with you, there's no like, I don't know. You get into some of these things, you go like, is this a scam? You know, it's like sometimes you're yeah. like, you just I don't know. Especially from like where we are, where we're from, like we we don't trust anyone. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a real breath of fresh air to like yeah you know talk to you guys and just be like yeah like happy yeah, to help to like it was just so it there wasn't any like ajita there wasn't any you know anything where i was like this seems weird or like mm-hmm. there's something off about this everything was like clear upfront honest easy mm-hmm. um and when you have all of the other stuff that you've worried about with filmmaking to have the people that are giving you money be easy. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's just such a rare thing. Uh, so. Yeah. Awesome. I'm so glad yeah. you found it easy and simple and everything you just said, I'll just repeat back, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's great. It's great. Great to know. Oh, one thing I wanted to ask just the marketing curiosity. I mean, how did you find out about the film fund? I uh, truly 
I don't. Oh, 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 no, I do remember. I think I was, I think you were on some sort of list. I think I was looking up okay. like top, you know, top funds for films. I was, you know, I was a mm-hmm. desperate man looking for needing help. Cause I think, th- I think at this point, like I had a director on like, so this went through a bunch of different directors and went mm-hmm. through a bunch of things over the seven years, but I finally had a director on. So I was like, and we kind of put a budget out and I was like, Oh, oh dude, I need help. And, yeah. uh, so I was kind of just looking through and I think you were on like a top five, you know, top 10 list. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think I went through a couple and I was like, this is arch. I mean, this is a tough, yeah. hey, it should be right. Like I wasn't complaining. I was like, they're going to give me, you know, a couple grand. I gotta, I gotta put some work into this and really, you know, mm-hmm. I did an Italian American fund. I did, that was so much work and yeah didn't get it <laughs> yeah. and then i was just so excited and then you know yeah i think you were on that yeah i think you're i'm pretty sure you're on one of those lists mm-hmm. awesome that yeah we're like on a few there's like a kit split post us no film school post us i think that was it i think that was it okay yeah yeah, yeah. No film school yeah they're yeah. they're great we love no film school they're, yeah. they're the the first um film organization that featured us i mean that's awesome i i'm i'm tooting the film funds the horn it, it's broken at this point but i was i was about to say we've been featured by sundance we've been featured by at&t film independent but no film school they were the first ones who uh who featured us so i just want to profusely thank them for getting our name out there too. it's just they're awesome i mean i've, I've mm-hmm. also just like learned stuff from their them so yes yeah, <laughs> like, you great, don't know how to website. do stuff yeah you're Absolutely. you're you're deathly afraid of telling anybody like i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> but it's like no yeah. one really does until you do it so exactly. and if, there's, if you have resources of people that have gone through that have walked over the coals, you know, and walked through the fire, then yeah, I'm going to listen to them uh, Absolutely. And, and try to take some of that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it was their, their, their website. Mm-hmm. Cool. I want to pivot away from Sunday dinner for a minute. You have mm-hmm. a bunch of other stuff you're working on too. You, you mentioned to me scripts you sold in the past, mm-hmm. some, some acting roles. Yep. What do you want to talk about? What do you give us, tell us a little bit about those experiences if you can. I mean, the, I mean, I was on smaller TV shows like 30 rock and uh, broad city, but that's a lot of my stuff is just like some of my friends got famous and <laughs> they brought me on. And <laughs> so some things I've auditioned for that I've gotten like orange is new black, but then like broad city, I know Abby and Alana through UCB and was on their mm. first, they on their web series, broad city, you know, and, and so I didn't, I didn't really need to audition for that. Uh, but I got a series regular role on, on this show called nightcap. That was really awesome. I got to improvise so much. And with all these celebrities, it was no one really watched the show. It was on Pop TV, like right when Pop TV was just starting to come out. It was like us in Schitt's Creek. That's it. Mm. Um, you see who won that race. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was such a cool experience, though. It was it was a really fun to just like shoot a whole TV show and just get to improvise with all these kind of celebrities that were coming in. It was it was like a Larry Sanders show. It was like a behind the scenes okay. of a talk show, um, and I was kind of like the talk show host who you never saw. Uh, is like kind of crony that kept popping into like the writer's room and it was Allie Wentworth and I got a shout out, uh, you know, Allie and she was, she was amazing uh, to work with and uh, Tom and Brad who ran the show. And it it was, uh, it was a dope experience. I was, I was bummed that uh, we didn't get past the second season understood, Uh but it was still like just kind of a, a a dream job. And yeah, uh, you know, they just let me go lose. Like after the first, day or so they were just like oh yeah you say whatever you want to them you know like, oh wow we need to go from here to here can you do that like once i yeah. prove that they're like the goal of the scene is to piss them off or like suck up to them mm-hmm. or whatever it was you, you, they would give me the intention maybe mm-hmm. a couple lines to hit very specifically and then they mm-hmm. were like in between wow like, just react do whatever you want and they use so mm-hmm. many of the improvised moments that's great uh in the actual show so that was that was really cool uh, and, mm-hmm. But I had a pivot to writing when I get out to L.A. because the acting kind of dried up. You kind of have to start over out here. I knew so many casting directors out in New York. I would still mm-hmm. audition for stuff out in New York, but it's a lot of local hire stuff, which means mm-hmm. they ain't flying you out. Like, right. it's, it's basically like if you do get this part, you're going to have to come out yourself. So I was really trying to restart um, me- re-meeting people. My timing was always a little off. I did like the Just for Last Festival in montreal through their through a character the, in their mm-hmm. characters division so i got some meetings after that 
but I didn't move out to LA after that. Like all my meetings were like with LA people. And then I stayed mm. in New York for another two years. So it's like, you come back out, like people move on. Like most of the people aren't yeah. still there. Like people have to understand that executives and directors and people jump to different places all the time. So it's, mm-hmm. you kind of have to get your bearings down. Like I always had good meetings with people. It's just a very, it's a very out of your hands industry. You can only do so much as an actor. Whereas a writer, I think you can always be writing. I mean, technically, you could always be acting as an actor. You can put together side stuff. But, but as a writer, like you, you, it's really in your control. Obviously, when you put it out mm-hmm. into the world, it is out of your control, just like acting. But I think I liked the control part because coming out to LA, just it's so much bigger. Everyone's doing it out here. And I got a little overwhelmed with like feeling like I needed to restart. I was like, oh, I did this for like six, seven years. Like, was auditioning mm-hmm. for some of the top casting directors in New York. And I was like, oh, f- uh, I got to start yeah. writing more. So I started my podcast up again, which is called The Need to Fail. So I did a bunch of those. How long have you been in LA now? I've been out in LA, I guess, for like five years now. Almost okay. five years, yeah. Um, so it, And everyone says, like, it's going to take you a while. I mean, it takes a while. Like, even if you were, unless you're like coming off like a huge sh- TV show and or a movie or something, you got a lot of heat behind you. Sure. Every, anything is easier then. Mm-hmm. But I think if you're just trying to make a jump and it, like my wife's in the industry too. So she, she was writing for a TV show out here. Uh, she's writing for another one now. And yeah, it's the, the right, the pivoting to writing was really fun. I, I think, uh, and just scratched another itch. And, and that was another mm-hmm. thing was like, my sister's a writer. And I was always like, well, I'm the math and math guy. and the funny one. Right. The, the actor she's the writer she's the poet you know i don't have any writing Mm -hmm. skills i was kind of dyslexic as a kid a little bit my reading comprehension was horrible so i was Mm -hmm. always like i can't write that's not gonna happen Mm -hmm. but when you're forced to do it uh when things (laughs) drop and you're kind of forced to do it yeah like my wife and i sold a movie when we were like we had a four week old so wow are you able to talk about that experience at all yeah, sure. I mean, we, we, we sold the movie to Nickelodeon. And uh, again, listen, we, we've been lucky in the UCB community that we were able to kind of know a lot of people from Funny or Die and also College mm-hmm. Humor. There, that's kind of like the, <clears throat> the, the, the strong comedy communities that are outside of our kind of live community and mm-hmm. with where we know friends and uh, so yeah, we, 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 we just stay friendly with so many people. That's how I know Darren and, and, uh, you know, Darren was at UCB, but you know, he's doing funnier or die stuff, Kevin as well. So same thing with like someone from college humors went off in a production company and was just like, Hey, just, Nickelodeon's looking for teen stuff. And mm-hmm. I know you guys, like my wife and I wrote right together as well. So it's like, I know you guys okay. are just easy to work with. And if you want to come up with some log lines, I could throw them out and if they're interested, maybe we'll come up with like a pitch and. We were just mm. having our kid, and <laughs> and wow. it was like just before Crazy we time. had our kid. It was like two months before we had our kid. I put some log lines together mm-hmm. uh, for TV shows, movies, and they really liked one TV show idea I had as a movie idea. So that was ba- mm-hmm. it's it basically like a, a Footloose meets I don't know if you ever seen the movie The Wizard, where it's about video games, but it's mm-hmm. about it like a town that like uh, uh, forbids video games. Okay. So these kids go on this and, and cell phones and stuff. So these kids, these gamers go on this like eighties adventure without their phones to like, it. go to Boston to try to enter mm-hmm. this video game tournament to prove like video games are fun and cool. Um, right, right. Cool. So, so it was like one of those. So yeah, the process was just, are they pitching? It? Uh, it was on the short list before COVID. Uh, now that okay. COVID hit, I don't know. Yeah. I guess we'll see. <laughs> we will see. We will see. I hope they do. I, I, it was a really – that was a dope process. That was a dope process. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Have one last question for yeah. you, two-part question. What advice would you give to prospective filmmakers and those who are looking to enter the Film Fund contests? Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> That's the, the first part of your question. I mm. think uh, any anybody doing anything artistic – uh it's you can be in the flow state which is magical and i think anybody that has done stuff like this knows what i'm talking about where everything's just clicking and your kind of time stops and you whether you're a writer or an actor or a producer like everything's just like you're so in the present moment and the flow is there that things are just happening things are coming out of you mm-hmm. you don't know where they're coming from 
I would say 90% of the time, maybe this is just for me, it's an agonizing, uncomfortable uh, look in the mirror. Like you're just looking at yourself in the mirror and you're seeing all the faults and you're just like, this, this is too hard. This is like, mm. this sucks. I don't know. It's it's kind of like your car is stalled. You're, you're having to push it. It's this heavy thing. It feels this weighted down exercise that you have to do to kind of get over your nerves of being bad or being judged mm -hmm. or being wrong. And you have to really embrace that uncomfortable feeling. It's really hard, but like you just have to feel uncomfortable a lot of the times when you're making art, especially with rewrites, uh, editing. These are not easy processes. You're killing darlings. Mm. You're confused. You're mostly like most of the time it's like mixing paint together. And it's just like this doesn't look good. <clears throat> right. So you have to be patient and, and, and feel that uncomfortable nature. There's this like really arduous period of making anything artistic. I think that's like shit is just messy. It doesn't look right, but the, it started mm -hmm. from a real fun place and you, and you imagine it ending at a really fun place, but there's this middle period of just shit uh, yeah. and it doesn't feel good. Uh, no. So sometimes you sit down as a writer and you go like, ah, I don't want to edit this act. I don't know where yeah. things go. Like there's too many yeah. notes. And it's just kind of a one foot in front of the other thing, like take a deep breath and know that you're not always going to be in that flow state. Uh, mm -hmm. When it happens, embrace it, go with it, work for three hours, and it's going to feel like five minutes. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it's kind of a little bit of a grind. If you want to do this for a living, like any good work, I think, is like you love doing it, but it's really – there's a resistance to doing it at times. And that's, yeah. that's self-imposed a lot of the time. Uh, almost all yeah the time. I, I definitely resonate with that i mean i wrote a couple of feature scripts um in college and i put them away in a drawer and i took them out maybe a month or so ago and i read them and i was like okay well these are not great but uh -huh. i think there's something here and it's like do i go into them and start revising the whole thing and start mm -hmm. editing it or do i start from scratch so um yeah i definitely understand that arduous kind of shit period where yeah. you're like you have a kernel of something but you need to polish it and make it better and it's definitely hard yeah uh, you're also like not special which is a good thing to remind yourself i'm not saying you are not but like we're right. all like not as important and special as we think in the mm -hmm. moment like this isn't that important it feels so important to you it feels so right to you but at the end of the day no one really gives a shit so mm -hmm. you think they do like you think there's all these people watching you in your room writing like no one's thinking about you no mm -hmm. one cares it sounds harsh it sounds kind of fatalistic or just mean <laughs> but it's true and it i, I yeah. at least for me that takes some of the burden off to be like no one's in my room with me now it's not my fucking dog sleeping under you know like <laughs> there's no one here i can do yeah. this right now um and there's different methods on on how to work you know there's like the 25 minute five minute off method and mm -hmm. uh, i think it's like pom the pomodoro method and there's all little mm -hmm. things that you could kind of research to kind of get over your demons uh, with that mm -hmm. but what you went through is like so many other people went through that too which is like i did this thing in the past it's probably shit but then you look at it and you're like yeah it's kind of shitty but i love this scene you know so it's right like, exactly definitely get that yeah what do you what do you do with that and it's like i don't know you know you try, yeah. try, try one more. Like, yeah, start rewriting and put that scene mm -hmm. in a new thing. Yeah. Don, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to wrap up here. I cool. would plug your social media channels. I'm not on too much. To I'm on out. Instagram mostly, at Don Finelli. Okay. I'm on at Twitter a little bit, at Don Finelli as well. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. At Don Finelli on Twitter and Instagram. I want to thank everyone for listening and remind you that the Spring 2021 Narrative Documentary Contests are opening soon. So be sure to check out thefilmfund.co to submit your entries. And check out our social channels at The Film Fund on Instagram, Simply Film Fund on Twitter, and Film Fund Co. on Facebook. You can get prizes such as up to $10,000 in cash to make your film or equipment rentals. And we have to work out the exact sponsors, but we will get them to you in future episodes. Um, so Kit to gift cards. I know we have them. Uh, so check the website regularly for the most up-to-date info on all that. Check out our blog with great filmmaking and producing tips, trying to keep this under an hour. So we have 30 seconds left. Newsletter, follow us on social plug the ebook the ebook we have an awesome ebook on the pre-production process learn everything about pre-producing and everything you do before you hit record and we have merch the filmfund.co slash merchandise pay for episodes like this and support the community i want to thank everyone again for listening tune in every friday for new episodes don you have 
10 seconds. Do you want to add anything else? Uh, let's guys, let's be kind to each other, please. <laughs> I love it. Be kind. All right, Don. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Talk to her soon. <laughs> Thank you.